Hello and welcome! In this video, we at Dynamo Nordic would like to demonstrate how to perform a material parameter identification using LSOPT. To do this, we have chosen a simple inverse modeling example where two power law parameters are to be fit to test data from a tensile test. The optimization objective is to minimize the difference in a least square sense between the experimental and simulation force displacement curves. After first creating a new project in LSOPT, we will show you how this parameter identification can be performed by only following these seven steps. First, we open the graphical user interface. On the right hand side, you can access recently opened projects, but for new projects, you first choose a directory for the new project. Then you provide a name for the LSOPT project file. And if you like, you could also write a description of the project and an author, but this is not mandatory. The next step is to choose the correct task for your study. A parameter identification is an optimization process where you are interested in a single optimal setting of your parameters. Therefore, the appropriate task is the sequential response surface method. The flowchart and optimization settings will change slightly as you make this choice. An often time-consuming step in any optimization is the parametrization of your input files. When only material parameters are used, the parametrization is greatly simplified by using the keyword star parameter. If you use this keyword, these parameters will automatically be identified as potential variables in LSOPT. For clarity, let us change the name of the stage to Tensile. This could be useful in a more complex setup where your process contains many stages. By double-clicking on your stage, you open it for editing. You work your way from the top down and start with setting the path for the LSDynab binary to be used. Alternatively, you give a submit command to your queuing system. Then you point at the LSDynab input file and LSOPT will detect the possible include files. In the resources fields, you can also specify that several simulations will run simultaneously. Two parameters were automatically identified due to the star parameter keyword. These are by default always set to constants to begin with, and we need to change these to continuous variables in order for them to be active in the optimization. We also need to specify some reasonable bounds on our variables in which the search for an optimum will be conducted. Apart from variables, we also need to specify responses or histories that should be extracted from the simulations. In this case, we are interested in the force displacement curve that we want to fit to the experimental force displacement curve. And therefore we have an output from the simulation which is the history of the displacement of two nodes. And I will show you here in LS prepost which two nodes I am referring to. So here you have them. And these nodes are located at a distance from each other which corresponds to the elongation measurement in the experiment. The tensile force, on the other hand, in the simulation is extracted by a cross-section node set, this node set. Now, LSOPT has to read the LSDynA output histories that we have defined. This is also related to the tensile simulation stage and is found under the Histories tab. For LSDynA histories, there are prepared interfaces and they all read from the binary output file from LSDynA. In node out, we choose the deformation between the two defined nodes to get directly the elongation we are looking for, 
you can go back to give a history a proper name. To retrieve the force, the only thing you need to remember is the section ID that you have assigned on your database cross-section card. When you have the two histories, force and elongation, as functions of time, the thing left to do is to create a cross-plot of the two in order to get the force displacement relation. Previously defined histories are available in pull-down menus. And if you accidentally use one of the disallowed characters in your name, you will be giving a warning message as I just did. The last thing to set up is the matching between the simulation curve and the experiment. This is achieved by adding a curve matching composite. In adding this composite, you can choose between calculating a mean square error or a curve matching error. I guess either way would work in this example, but let's choose the mean square error. Then uh, browse for the file containing the experimental results. The results are stored in a text file containing two columns and the first column are the x values, in this case the displacement values. Then you can choose from a pull down menu the curve that you want to match the experiment against and that is the force displacement history that we have defined. Finally, you have to set the objective for the optimization. You do this by selecting the defined curve matching composite as the objective in the optimization box. Now we are ready to run the optimization. I will change maximum number of iterations in the optimization to 10 and keep the other stopping criteria to their default values. If these criteria are met prematurely, you can change them later and continue running the optimization from the iteration where it stopped, without rerunning any simulations. If we double click on the LED belonging to the stage tensile, we will get the progress window. Here you can monitor the progress of all the simulations, and by selecting one of the simulations you can access the folder that simulation has. If you are interested in looking at its corresponding files, for instance. You may also take a look at the log file for a simulation. The log file is basically the output from the simulation with some extra information related to the LSOP's progress. This might be useful for debugging. And the third option is to open the selected simulation using LS Prepost. When clicking on this button, you are also asked to select which files to be opened with LS Prepost, whether it is the input file, the ddplot file, or perhaps some other file. But let's open the ddplot file to look at the simulation results. Now we are ready to look at the results from the parameter identification. By opening the viewer, you have a number of different results to choose from. We can start with the optimization histories. Here you can see how the objective function value has changed, that is how the mean square error has decreased. You can also see how the values of our two variables k and n has changed, which is the red line, and also how the variable bounds have changed through the optimization. Let's close this window and open a new plot, for instance the history plot. Here you can view simulation histories such as the force displacement. And it is also possible to plot the experimental history curves. What you see here is the optimal solution which is retrieved in the verification run after the final iteration. 
but we can also change to see histories in previous iterations. By clicking on curves, we can look at the variable values associated with that particular simulation, as well as response values. We can switch between different simulations by clicking on the different simulation numbers. Or you could do a multiple select to be able to do a comparison between the different simulation runs. So, I hope this small tutorial was helpful to you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, take a look at our website where you will find more videos and information about the services that we offer.